Hello friends, welcome to this series in which we will be discussing the multiple choice questions on specific topics of Indian polity. So this is the second video in the series of videos. So in this video we will be discussing 10 multiple choice questions on the topic making of the constitution. So making of the constitution denotes that time period when the constituent assembly was working to make the constitution. In the previous video we discussed the evolution or historical background of the constitution. So if you haven't seen that video, go check out that video. So let us discuss the 10 MCQs on making of the constitution. I urge you to take a pause after every question and attempt the question by yourself. So at the end of the video, you can evaluate yourself that how many answers you are able to decode out of these 10 questions. So let us begin. The first question is the members of the constituent assembly of India were option A indirectly elected and chosen by the British, B, directly elected and nominated, C, indirectly elected and nominated, D, directly elected and chosen by the British. So the correct answer is C, indirectly elected and nominated. See, there were two types of provinces from which the members of constituent assembly were chosen. First were the British provinces and the others were the princely states. So the British provinces were further of two types. There were governor's provinces and then there were chief commissioner's provinces. And then there were princely states which were under the rules of princes and kings. So the members from the British provinces were indirectly elected whereas the members from the princely states were nominated. So there was no direct election at all. They were actually indirectly elected and nominated. The second question is, what was the criteria for allocation of seats to the British provinces and princely states in the constituent assembly? So options are A, as per the Government of India Act 1935, B, as per the population, C, as per the area, or D, as per the religious composition. So the correct answer is B as per the population. So population was the criteria on the basis of which seats were allocated to the British provinces and the princely states. And the criteria was one seat for every million population. So for every 10 lakh Indians, there was one seat in the constituent assembly. Third question is, who was the constitutional advisor to the constituent assembly for India? Options are A. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, B. Atse Mukherjee, C. K. T. Shah or D. B. N. Rao. The correct answer is D. B. N. Rao. So the option B. R. Ambedkar here is just to confuse you since B. R. Ambedkar was a legal luminary. So he was the chairman of the drafting committee but he was not the official constitutional advisor to the constituent assembly. That role was by Mr. That role was played by Mr. B. N. Rao. The fourth question is the fundamental rights subcommittee was headed by whom? So there were various committees like the union constitution committee, the states committee, the drafting committee, the steering committee, etc. So out of those committees, the fundamental rights subcommittee was headed by whom? Options are A. Rajendra Prasad, B. J. B. Kriplani, C. Vallabhai Patel or D. Jawaharlal Nehru. So the correct answer is B. J. B. Kriplani. So you might find this to be a kind of factual question, but these questions are regularly asked in especially in the state civil services examinations. So here you might also be confused between Sardar Vallabhai Patel and J.B. Kriplani. But let me tell you that Sardar Vallabhai Patel headed the Fundamental Rights and Minorities Committee. And under that committee, there were two subcommittees. One was the Fundamental Rights Subcommittee, which was headed by Mr. J.B. Kriplani. And second was the Minorities Subcommittee, which was headed by H.C. Mukherjee. So the combined committee known as the Fundamental Rights and Minorities Committee was headed by Sardar Vallabhai Patel whereas under that there were two subcommittees 
and the fundamental rights subcommittee was headed by Mr. J.B. Kriplani. The fifth question is, which of the following committees were headed by Jawaharlal Nehru? The options are A. Union Powers Committee B. Union Constitution Committee C. States Committee or D. All of the above So the correct answer is D. All of the above So all these three committees were headed by Jawaharlal Nehru Since he was an important figure during and after the freedom struggle so he was given larger responsibilities in making the constitution and as a reason as a result all these three important committees were headed by mr nehru a sixth question is the seats of british provinces were decided among three categories of people so which among the following is incorrect we have just discussed that there were two types of provinces the british provinces and the princely states and the members of the british provinces were indirectly elected but those indirect elections were actually held in the legislative assemblies of those provinces. So the, for that purpose, the electorate was divided among three categories of people. So which among the following is incorrect? So which of the following is not one of those three categories? Options are A. Christians, B. Sikhs, C. General or D. Muslims. The correct answer here is A. Christians. There was no such category where separate representation was provided to Christians. So there were three categories, Sikhs, General and Muslim. And in general, there were Hindus as well as the lower caste people. The seventh question is, who among the following was not a member of the drafting committee of the Indian constitution? So there was a drafting committee, which was a seven member committee headed by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. So in that committee, there were six other members. So you have to tell which one of the following was not a member. Options are A. K. M. Munshi, B. Gopalaswami Ayangar, C. H. C. Mukherjee or D. Syed Muhammad Sadullah. So the correct answer is C. H. C. Mukherjee. So the seven member Drafting committee was headed by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Other than that, the six members were Gopalaswami Ayyengar, Aladi Krishnaswami Ayyar, Dr. K. M. Munshi, Sayyid Muhammad Sadullah, N. Madhav Rao and T. T. Krishnamachari. N. Madhav Rao was replaced by, N. Madhav Rao had actually replaced Mr. B. L. Mitra and T. T. Krishnamachari had replaced D. P. Khaitan. So, H. C. Mukherjee was not a member of the drafting committee. Eighth question is, which of the following constitutional provisions was enforced on 26th of November 1949? So, the constitution was partially enforced on this date and fully came into force on January 26, 1950. So, you have to tell me which of the following provisions was enforced on this particular date. The options are, a. Directive Principles of State Policy B. Fundamental Duties C. Elections or D. None of the above The correct answer is C. Elections See, Directive Principles were not enforced on this date Fundamental Duties were not there in the Constitution itself They were later added by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment in the year 1976 so any question of fundamental duties being enforced on either of these dates does not arise. Then C were elections. Elections, the provision were actually enforced on 26th of November and none of the above is not an option. So there were certain provisions which were required at the very outset. So they were implemented earlier. For example, the provisions related to elections, the provisions related to citizenship, provisional parliament, etc. They were required because the elections Conducting of elections was the primary responsibility of the administration. That's why elections were implemented early on. Ninth question is, which other functions were performed by the constituent assembly besides making the constitution? So the assembly also acted in various other capacities. So which other tasks were performed by the assembly? Options are A. Elected Jawaharlal Nehru as the first prime minister. B. Passed the Indian Independence Act 1947. 
C. Declared Mahatma Gandhi as father of the nation or D. Ratified India's membership of the Commonwealth of Nations. The correct answer here is D. It ratified India's membership of the Commonwealth of Nations. See, the assembly did not elect Jawaharlal Nehru as the first prime minister. That was done after the first general elections were held when the constitution came into force. The second option, it passed the Indian Independence Act 1947. This is also wrong because the Indian Independence Act was not passed by Indian Parliament. It was actually passed by the Parliament of UK. Third, it declared Mahatma Gandhi as father of the nation. It never happened. So the fourth option is correct. The Constituent Assembly actually ratified or corrected India's membership of the Commonwealth of Nations. There is another interesting point here that this Commonwealth of Nations was earlier known as the British Commonwealth of Nations. So the India agreed to join this organization only if the synonym, only if the prefix British was removed from this organization. So British agreed to that and it it became Commonwealth of Nations. So India joined it. Commonwealth of Nations is a group of all those countries which were under the British colonial rule at one point in time. The last question is, you have to choose the incorrect statement. Options are A. Sachidanand Sinha was the first temporary president of the Constituent Assembly of India. B. Constituent Assembly also functioned as the legislative body of India. C. The Constituent Assembly elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad as the first president. Or D. The first meeting of the Constituent Assembly took place on August the 14th, 1947. So, I hope you would have chosen your answer. Three of these statements are correct and one is incorrect. So, the incorrect statement is D. The first meeting of the Constituent Assembly actually took place on 9th of December 1946. So, all three statements are correct. So, thank you everyone. You can evaluate your score. And according to that, you can see where you fall. So if you fall in either of those, these two categories, I would request you to revise as much as possible because that is the only way for you to increase your score. So thank you everyone. We'll be discussing a new topic in the next video.